Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Parker, I'm the champion of print. And today I want to talk to you about some of the trends and developments I've seen in the supermarket industry over the last 10 to 15 years, because I think they contain some very valuable, but some very worrying lessons for the printing industry. So 15 years ago, all was good in the world of supermarkets. Everyone was making good money, there wasn't that much competition. People just went and shopped at the supermarket that was nearest our home, and that was fine. There was enough to go round for everyone. And then things started to change. We saw the introduction of more low-cost supermarkets. There were some new operators who came in and had very different business models. They had a much leaner, tighter cost base, they actually looked at their operations in a much more detailed way and they were able to offer customers much cheaper prices. And naturally, a lot of customers decided that they were happy to drive that a little bit further and go to the new supermarkets that were offering them these cheaper prices. The middle ground began to struggle a little bit. Now, some of those supermarkets developed and adapted a different business model and we got to the point where we had more luxury brands of supermarkets. So one or two supermarket chains decided that they were going to focus on the top end. They would sell much more expensive products, maybe some artisan products. Things that had been crafted elsewhere were supposed to taste better and that appealed to a better off portion of the population. So they continued to do quite well. Meanwhile, the new low cost entrants, they were doing very well as well. They were building up their businesses rapidly. They were acquiring a lot more customers very quickly. And in the middle ground, the traditional supermarkets, who maybe hadn't altered their business model that much, were struggling. They were being forced to cut their prices to try and compete with the new low cost supermarkets. And their profit margins were being hit. At the same time, their turnover was reducing as well, and there wasn't really anywhere for them to go. Now, perhaps you're already seeing the parallels that can be drawn with the printing industry, because 15 years ago, life was good for most printing companies. There was enough work to go around. Printers could charge, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but they could make good profits from the work that they were producing. And then things began to change. And for them, it was the introduction of the online printers and the print management companies. And together, these two elements of the printing industry combined to drive down prices quite dramatically. Today, if we look at what's going on for most buyers of print, they have four choices. They can work with the online printers, and it's very easy for any end user to go and buy print from an online printer. You don't even have to be a great designer. Many of them these days have online design templates. The prices are cheap, the ordering is easy, and it's very different from the world of the traditional printer. The same can be said for the print management companies. They offer a very integrated service. They do everything for the customer. No longer does the customer have to deal directly with the printing company. And at the same time, the print management company is offering cheaper prices. At the other end of the scale, there's a number of printers who've developed their business models as well, and they're offering more value-added services. Often they're combined with data or they're combined with multi-channel offerings, but also perhaps the very high-end printers and the craft printers who are offering letterpress as well. And all of those companies are making pretty good profit margins from these value-added services that offer more than the online printers and the print management companies are able to do. And then you've got the middle ground. And there's an awful lot of printing companies who are still in that middle ground. And just like the middle ground of the supermarkets, they're struggling with nowhere to go. They're having their revenue reduced. They're having to reduce profit margins to try and compete with the online printers and with the print management companies. And if I'm quite honest, I don't see a lot of future for many of these companies. So maybe it's time for each printing company to reflect. What segment of the market are you in now? What segment of the market do you want to be in? Because I suspect that many of you who are watching this video are actually still in that middle ground. 
So maybe it's time for you to reflect where you are at the moment in the print marketplace and where you'd like to be. Because I suspect that many of you watching this are still in that middle ground for printing companies. And just like the supermarkets, your margins are being squeezed and your profits are reducing. So you have a choice. You can either move to the online marketplace or you can try and introduce some value added services. And if I'm honest, I don't recommend that you move to the online marketplace unless you're really sure about what you're doing. If we look at the low cost supermarkets, I talked to one of the guys who's involved in operations there. They plan everything down to a very fine degree. They measure the customer aisles. They place their product to make sure that everything has a maximum chance of being purchased. They plan their customer through flow, both for profit and for efficiency. They squeeze every last drop of profit when they plan their stores. And it's the same for the online printing market. I know one online printer and they get through about, I think it's 50,000 orders a day at their peak. And some of those orders are for just one product. And they're happy to process those orders. It's not a problem for them, but only because they have highly efficient systems that are geared to automatically batch up products and make sure that they're printed automatically at the right time for delivery. There's a lot of software that goes behind that. There's a lot of planning that goes behind that. And there's a lot of printing companies who would like to be in the online marketplace who simply aren't capable of those levels of planning and delivery. So that leaves the value added marketplace for you. How can you add value to your customers? These are subjects that I'll be exploring in future films. However, for now, think about two things. First of all, how do you help your customer's business? How do you bring value to their business? This is about them, not about you. And secondly, what products could you introduce? Maybe they're not things that you want to produce in your factory, but maybe you can partner with other people to get new offerings out to your client base. And they may not all be about print. Some may be about data, about websites, and others will be about new products, high-end products that you can charge more for. I really would urge you to start planning along these lines if you're not doing so already. If you start taking action now, then you really have an opportunity to succeed and thrive in the print industry. But if you stay as part of the middle ground, then you're going to continue struggling and quite possibly there won't be a future for your company. That sounds like I'm ending this on a very negative note, but actually there's lots of opportunities in print out there. And most printing companies out there are capable of adding further value to their services and doing more than just delivering print on paper. If you deliver print on paper, you commoditize. And that's great if you're on the online print space. But if you can think about the right value added services, then you can add value, you can add profit, and you can have a great future in the printing industry. Thank you.